Hello. Today, I will be making some iodide. Crystalline form iodide. Um, let's start. Right here, we have 26.2 grams of potassium iodide. 50 milliliters of water. some hydrogen peroxide, 6%, and concentrated 20% to 30% hydrochloric acid. First, we're gonna get our 26.2 grams of potassium iodide and place it on our magnetic stirring machine and add a stir bar to that, just like that, and then we are going to add our water, 50 milliliters. Iodine is very soluble in water, so 100 milliliters of water dissolves more than 100 grams of potassium iodide. Let's start stirring a bit. Shouldn't take too long before it dissolves. As we can see, our uh, Mixture is slowly dissolving, right here. And to that, we are going to add 25 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Okay, I have measured 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid right here. And we're going to slowly add this into our mixture. Slow down the stirring a bit. turning yellow as you can see okay our solution has completely reacted with the hydrochloric acid now we're going to add the hydrogen peroxide about 40 milliliters of six percent hydrogen peroxide to slowly add that as well it is an exothermic reaction so and uh, some vapors will escape so do this outside or something under a fume hood as you can see turn black and vapors are coming out Small amounts of vapor. Now our iodine has came out of solution. It is exothermic, as I said, so it is quite hot. Okay, so I've set up my vacuum filtration flask here. Normal, normal filtration setup would work as well with just a funnel gravity filtration. Now I'm going to filter this solution. As you can see, it's slowly separating. Let me open my pump. I'm going to wash it with a little bit of water because there is a little bit of iodine left at the bottom of my beaker. So, as you can see, a little bit more iodine. Let's add that in there. 
open the pump. For the filtration. And now I'm going to take my iodine from the top. It's not pure, by the way. In the next step, we are going to sublimate it and purify it. Hello. Okay, so I have gotten my iodine. It's not pure, as I said, right here. There's not a lot, but I have noticed something. Don't use steel wear when kind of like extracting and playing around with iodine. It it's just kind of starts to react with it and causes some weird reaction, which I'm not sure what it is. But the next step is going to be to purify this iodine. Now the iodine's in the flask. And I will place it on top of my heating machine and turn the heat on. Have some cold water, put that on top, and slowly, I'll turn it over so you guys can see, it's going to sublimate the iodine and going to deposit itself onto the walls of the flask as well as the bottom of the round bottom flask as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my heating. It seems like it's 75% of the way. Now, what I'm gonna do is, after this cools down, I'm gonna set it aside, right here. You can see, it's right there. I'm going to scrape the sides to collect the iodine crystals. Let's wait for it to cool down. I want to talk about how you clean this. Uh, the one of the easiest ways to clean iodine, sodium hydroxide. We, what I did to clean my glassware and stuff is, I put a bucket and I put a little bit of sodium hydroxide, one scoop into a small bucket, and filled it with water, and let it sit there for about one to two minutes, stirred it a bit and then I put all my iodine contaminated glassware into it and the iodine reacts with the sodium hydroxide and that basically removes the iodine from your glassware makes them soluble because you can't wash it with water iodine is not soluble in water unfortunately so yeah that's how i clean my glassware you can see slowly clearing up and there's those blue bluish purplish iodine crystals there bottom seems relatively empty but yeah you can see the purple vapors of the iodine slowly sublimating on the walls and at the bottom of the glass actually I'll show you a bit of it see the, the iodine crystals and obviously the iodine vapors as well yeah, I think iodine is very, very beautiful. Well, it looks beautiful, but it's pretty annoying chemical, I'll be honest. Like, you can see, look at my table. It stains my table. And those stains do not come off, because it's on wood. Okay, so the sublimation pro process looks relatively done. 
I'm going to slowly take off the top and show you guys the crystals. See those iodine crystals? I'm going to extract it now from the bottom of the flask. You can see the iodine is still sublimating a little bit. Mm, came out nicely as a big chunk. Has a little bit of water in it, probably from the water inside the flask that was inside the actual iodine that we put in there because I didn't completely dry it, but should be fine. Uh, doesn't seem like there's any water in there. And you see the iodine crystals on the walls. Now that's what we're trying to scrape out. I am using my the steel spatula that I had. It's it's not good at all because the iodine reacts with it for some reason i could use glass but that's a very hard process or oh, it's, it's a lot harder as you can see it doesn't really work very well either so i think i will go with my steel and hopefully it doesn't stick to it too much it's going to be quick i guess Don't scrape anything that's at the bottom of the beaker, just only on the walls and the um, bottom of the round bottom flask that we already just did and just came out as one big piece. Okay, now, I'll be back in a second. I'll take you to my sink and where I'll show you how to clean the glassware. Okay, hello. I'm going to show you how to clean the glassware now. You can see this beaker is not the cleanest beaker. Okay, now I have this bucket. Yeah, I put my slightly iodine contaminated spatula in there. And I'm going to put some sodium hydroxide in there. That is going to dissolve the iodine. I'm just going to put a little bit, not a lot, one scoop. And that's the end for the hydroxide. I'm going to put some water now. See, this beaker, not the cleanest. In the meantime, I'll just wash this off. The iodine is slowly coming off. Slowly but surely. Make sure you do this outside and with gloves because can get very nasty chemical burns from sodium hydroxide and eventually all the iodine should slowly start coming off there you go that's how you clean iodine okay it's our final yield well i haven't measured it yet but there you go we have crystals i'm gonna put in my beaker i'm going to break those the, break them up basically uh, as always, I'm not going to use the steel spatula. I've broken up my relationship with that thing while dealing with iodine. And so, yeah, I'm going to mount my phone to my tripod and then I'll be back. Hello. Okay, now I'm going to put everything into this beaker and I'm going to slowly just kind of wreck it apart, break it apart. Now I'm breaking it up slowly. It is wet. Of course it is wet. Okay. Now we have a scale here. I want to see how much our yield is. Okay, let's put that there. There. And slowly put that in there. So let's see how much we have ended up with. I don't know if you can see, but we have about 5.15 grams. I mean, it is not a very bad yield amount, you can see. It's fine. Probably could have gotten about 7 to 8 grams, maybe a bit more. 
we used more uh, hydrogen peroxide and didn't lose stuff to like stuff being stuck on beakers but yeah I'm pretty happy with my yield so so now if you're asking what am I gonna do with this iodine now iodine is pretty useful in chemistry I'm gonna make some iodine monochloride out of it and the reason why I want to make iodine monochloride is because it looks really nice yep you heard me that's my only reason to make such a toxic chemical but yeah thanks for watching I guess there you go that's how to make iodine I hope you enjoyed if you enjoyed at least like so I can know what type of videos my viewers which I have like probably like five of what type of videos you guys enjoy and thank you